Okay, everyone, so let's get this webinar started. With me today is Anthony Pong. He is all the way over in the United States. It's 4.30 in the morning for him at the moment. So I'm super impressed that he got up. And he is the Executive Director of Caterpie. Now, he's going to talk about the history of shoelaces and the benefits to your patients. So I'm going to hand it over to Anthony. I'm going to try and be quiet if I can, but I may interrupt every now and then if a question pops into my head. But if anybody else has a question while you're uh, watching this, so while Anthony's talking, uh, type it in the Q&A section or just put it in the chat box and I will interrupt and pass it on. That's if Anthony doesn't already see it beforehand. So, Anthony, over to you. All right. Appreciate the introduction, Tyson. So, uh, welcome. I'm, my, my name is Anthony, like Tyson said, and I'm uh, Executive Director of Caterpie. We'll be presenting shoelaces today. Um, not the sexiest topic, but I think quite relevant, quite important to shoes and overall foot health. Um, so yeah, let me get started. I'll do a little presentation with this. Um, okay, so let me share my screen. So it's important to note that uh, shoelaces are also known as shoe strings and boot strings sometimes in the UK as well. Uh, but for the most part, we'll be using shoelaces as our main terminology. Um, so yeah, so the first instance of a shoelace that we can find on record is about 3300 BC from an Iceman named Utsi. Oops, oh, it's, I think it's playing automatically now. Um, this top photo is the first shoe that we can find on record. It has laces woven through it using um, lime bark you know, a part of a tree. Uh, this bottom is a recreation of it, just uh, to the, the closest that we can find. Now, more modern shoelaces that we can think of are from 2000 BC, I'm oh, sorry about that, uh, 2000 BC used by the Romans and the Greeks. Um, they were raw, oh, this is a, sorry, this is playing more than I thought. The read mode maybe. be. Yeah, okay, right. this is better. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, in 2000 BC, this is mostly the uh, common shoelace that you would see. Uh, everything made out of leather with leather laces. Now, leather laces are traditionally not that great because they are not waterproof. And so because of that, buckles and buttons were the most popular type of fastening for shoes uh, for a long time, for, for at least probably two, three thousand years. Um, and it wasn't until the late 1800s that shoelaces became popular again with the rise of sports being more popular for the common folk as well. Um, with the rise of sports, they needed a better fastening method for shoes to not be as loose uh, and to kind of customize tension uh, as you needed to do it. Uh, the modern day shoelace was popularized or said to be invented in the 1970s by an English gentleman named Harvey Kennedy. And the reason they became popular is because of the invention of the aglet. Um, and just a quick terminology, the aglet is the plastic piece held at the end of shoelaces that makes it easier to weave and makes uh, and prevents it from fraying. And so it was actually the invention of the aglet that popularized shoelaces, along with other materials like cotton, nylon, polyester, all these different types of materials that could withstand water. Um, other alternative shoelaces that started to be dabbed and invented were in the 1960 Puma invented Velcro sneakers. Uh, everybody remembers Velcro being popular for a time, but it, it, it didn't last too long. Um, and then elastic laces started being introduced in 1997. Uh, now going back to normal shoelaces, the most popular way of tying shoelaces is the granny knot. Um, it's the traditional bunny ears, as we call it here in the States, over, under, and loop through. Uh, you know, I, I assume different countries have different sayings for it. Um, there are some pros and cons with these normal shoelaces. Um, they're a quick release. So once you untie them, uh, they're quickly released and you can get your foot out of the shoe. They're familiar and you can tie them in different ways. Um, now, that being said, the granny knot and the normal shoelace always eventually does come undone. Um, there was a study done by the BBC and a study actually originally done by the University of Berkeley on why shoelaces always come undone. And it's a combination of the impact force from running along with the swinging of the laces themselves. Um, there's a quick video I wanted to show you guys about it. And so we'll just play it right here. And so the, the swinging, the momentum of the laces themselves 
actually cause the laces to come undone, uh, right? Because of the uh, the initial the inertia and the whipping from it. And so, what's also really interesting is once a shoelace starts to come undone, you can see it start to come unravel. It, it comes undone very quickly um, because of the quick release method. The momentum itself, you know, will make the shoelace come undone. Yeah, so that was just a quick video. I thought it was pretty cool to see. And so there's actually two ways to tie a normal shoelace. A lot of people don't know about this. There's a strong version where the laces go horizontally, and there's a weak version where the laces end up vertically. So when you tie your shoe, just pay attention to how the, the knot ends up coming undone. Uh, the stronger way is to have them horizontally, where the impact of the up and down doesn't uh, tie into the knot as well, no pun intended. And it's it just a matter of which one you're crossing over first. If you're crossing over left over right, then I think you do the right bunny ear over the left bunny ear. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's it's a combination the, of the... What about the double yeah, knot? The double knot. So yes, double knot does help, but there's still a weak and strong version of the double knot. Oh, okay. So if you can do a double knot of the strong version, that is still recommended. Um, and once the double knot comes undone, it's, it's a similar idea. Once the double knot comes undone, it still comes, it still makes the normal knot come undone quickly as well. Yep. Um, nowadays, oh, sorry, before we get into there, there's different lacing methods as well. Um, you know, you can tie a granny knot, but you can lace the shoe differently for different foot conditions. Um, so if you had heel slippage because the back of your foot was a little smaller or maybe the shoe was a little big, you could use a heel lock method, they call it in the running world, where you use the last row of the eyelet. Um, there's ways to skip middle parts to avoid high insteps or to skip the first row to allow for uh, more space in the forefoot as well. Right, so there are different ways to lace a normal shoelace to adapt for different foot conditions and foot problems. Um, there are many more ways to tie the shoelace. Here, here these are just the most popular three. Um, there's other ones to put more pressure on the big toe, to tighten the mid steps. So, so you know, there, there's different ways to kind of lace a shoelace as well. Um, and nowadays, there are a few different alternatives in the elastic shoelace world. Um, essentially, there are four ideas out there. Uh, there's the original invention where you have an elastic lace with a plastic clip holding it together in the middle. There's an elastic lace with two plastic clips on the ends to hold it in place. Uh, this is similar to the spiral curly laces that uh, were popular back in the 90s. Um, there's elastic pieces that hold individual eyelet rows together. And then there's uh, elastic shoelaces with mods or uh, elastic bumps on it throughout. And so in the modern day, these are the four most popular. In the future, maybe there's the uh, motorized shoe, you know, like back to the future where you don't need laces at all. Uh, it, but for now, uh, until then, these are what's most available. Now going into our product, right, where I'm from Caterpie. And so I'd like to think we've kind of invented a shoelace that solves all issues. And so what we are, is a elastic shoelace that has bumps on it. Um, and what these bumps allow you to do is hold tension throughout the entire shoe while customizing throughout, right? And so with other elastic shoelaces, usually there's a couple benefits, but everybody's missing something. Um, either you let your shoes be a slip on, but you can't customize tension or there's other plastic pieces and different parts that you have to tie. And then you can't adjust it after the fact, right? So what we've done is, with one piece of shoelace, you're still able to have the benefits of a normal shoelace, uh, but you have the adaptability of doing something elastic. And so what we use are these elastic bubs. When you lace them through, they get stuck in the eyelet holes and hold tension throughout the entire shoe. And so this is quite different from normal shoelaces because no, in normal laces, oops, in normal laces, all the tension is built up at the top of the shoe with the, uh, with the knot. It essentially acts as a big tourniquet on your foot. Um, and so if you have foot issues, neuropathy, blood uh, flow impingement or nerve impingement, this becomes quite a big problem for your foot. 
Um, since all the blood, as you know, goes to your feet, feet will always swell. Uh, everybody tries to avoid swelling feet, but that, that's just a natural part of your everyday. I don't, it's, it's better just to go with it than try to fight against it. Uh, and, and normal shoelaces, it's, it's hard to emphasize how much they just constrict blood on the top of the foot uh, by clamping things down like a big tourniquet. So our laces instead try to reverse it and hold tension throughout the entire shoe as opposed to relying on the knot. Um, what's really interesting here is that you can see you're able to adjust tension at every row. So if you had that wider instep, a wider front of the foot, you could lace it like normal, have the front part of your laces looser and have the back part tighter. Or reversed, you could have the back part looser and have the front part tighter, depending on your, your foot shape. So right, really the benefit of our laces is that you can lace them like normal. You don't have to lace them in different ways. They can customize tension to your foot shape exactly and help with blood flow to the feet. Um, and so this you know, little graphic just kind of shows that with normal shoelaces, it always constricts at the top where elastic laces help breathe the top of the foot a little bit better. So not only does that help put your shoes in and out, uh, take your shoes in and out throughout the day, but also for blood flow into the feet. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, that's where the shoelaces came from, how they work on every level, um, and future of shoelaces with new elastic ones. That was nice and quick. Yeah, I just wanted to yep. show you guys. You know, there, there's not this, <laughs> you can only talk about shoelaces for so long, I think. That's all right. So I, I brought my shoe here. Hang on a sec. Did you, have you got some shoes there to, to show how they're laced up or what the laces look like? Even though you had the pictures. Sorry again? Oh, no. So if you want to turn that screen off for a sec. Oh, yes, go back to us. Yes, yes. Here we go. So, uh, so these are laces like because have... you sent me some to have a bit of a play around with. Mm -hmm. So that's what they look like when they come out of the packet. And uh, yeah, oh, yeah. And just to let everyone know, I'm not being paid for this. This I'm just doing this because I thought this was actually really interesting and you might find it uh, interesting as well. Plus, I've been using it in my running shoes to uh, lace them up. And I would say it took me probably two or three wears and, and slight adjustments to get them exactly how I wanted it. But once I've got them in place now, uh, it's great. I don't have to worry about doing them up and they don't get loose. And that was part of the problem is they kept getting loose all the time. Not that I'm a great runner. And I'll tell you, the inertia for my run probably wouldn't do, undo most people's laces. <laughs> they wouldn't have a, have a problem with that. Um, Michael has his hand raised. So, oh, yes, let's look at this correctly. Allow to Michael to talk. talk. So, Michael, we're, we're flicking huh? on here to talk if you want. What uh, you can unmute yourself. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Mike. I'm really, really well. Uh, shoelaces have been a bit of a passion for me for quite a while uh, because it's the first thing I teach every single one of my clients to do. Because so where, where, are you, where are you based? I'm based in South Wales. Oh, right. Okay. Okay. And I don't know what's happened to my screen. I can't get it to go. I don't know if you can see me. Uh, if I can change this around, you may be able to see me. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, long story short, <laughs> I people to put the laces in the shoe and I teach them how to tie bows because I believe that the two most fundamentally important things that I've done for every single one of my clients, I then teach them how to buy shoes and what to look for in shoes because I believe that the manufacturers have steered shoes in a certain direction where the control systems have become more compromised because they don't have eyelet rings inside the shoes. They have D rings, D loops, and all these type of features, which narrow the bite face of the shoe. If you're taught to lace a shoe in the fashion that I generally recommend, you can control the surface tension of the shoe quite quickly and adequately. And it, I even teach them how to tie a bow that it stays balanced because there are, there are 14 or 15 different ways of tying bows. The most popular way, as you said, is the granny knot bow. And the granny knot bow is north and south. If you tie a reef knot bow, which is left over right, right over left, you will get a bilateral bow that stays at east west. If the strings are both the same size, balanced off and you tighten the knot down that knot will stay up all day long can you hear me yeah yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm just listening yeah i didn't want to interrupt okay so it's it's some it's one of the things that you know 
I might say I'm, I'm fairly passionate about because what when we lived in a world where if you couldn't tie a knot, you were no good to fish or fowl on land or sea. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, right. Now children are not taught to tie knots. They have every single form of control system other than a knot. So they don't learn those fine motor skills. So as a result of that, there is a pandemic of foot problems coming down the road. Because they can't do laces. Well, let's talk or about it from a can't tie, point of view. Can't tie knots, yeah. Right, when you wear a shoe, by definition, you are packaging your body weight in a box, agree? Yeah. We know the math it's you know, on heel strike and push through. So you need a minimum force of three fold your body weight to push forward into the next step. So ergo, basically, if I weigh 100 kilograms, the top apron force has to be able to control a minimum of five fold that to hold me down. So the pressure of the lace face is then crucial. Because if you have short lace shoes, you increase the pressure because pressure being mass over area. So what people aren't taught are the basic science of footwear, the importance of getting a shoe that actually does the job, that is the right shape for your foot, has a broad face control system, and then they are invested with negative terminologies, i.e. granny shoes. Because it's not a granny shoe, it is a child's shoe. You have the privilege of being a child again if you live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> So actually, uh, Colin Powell just had a question. Colin, do you want to, uh, oh, Anthony, do you want to, so Colin asked, does Caterpie work with D loops? So do you want to answer that um, now? D loops, let's see here. Uh, yes, yes. So I, I know a lot of boots or work boots have D loops. So yes, they'll fit through just like no problem. Uh, when there's tension, the bumps also prevent or prevent it from slipping through the D loops. Um, you can tie a knot at the end just to hold it in place. Um, or often many times with D loops, they do end up with uh, eyelets on the top rows of the shoe, which will, which will prevent the bumps from falling through too. Um, and yeah, so back to Mike, you know, I think you do bring up really interesting points about uh, tying shoelaces um, and, and having them to, you know, affect the shoe binding differently. Um, you know, the, these, you're right, they, the knots just aren't taught anymore. You know, nobody really learns how to tie knots. Um, I believe they were once part of school curriculum, even here in the States. Uh, but nowadays, that's just not, isn't true anymore. Um, what we're trying to do is prevent tying the knots in the first place, right? It's, it's our belief that the knot is actually the problem of shoelaces. One, because it's difficult to tie, difficult to teach. Um, but two, it's also the source of the error and source of problems, right? It's the point of failure. If your knot comes undone, your whole shoe comes undone. And it's also the pain pinch point for most patients and most people, uh, both from the tying perspective and from a swelling perspective. Okay, so has anybody else got any other questions or does anyone else want to put the hand up or dive in and, and have a chat? Travis, I see you're sitting there quiet which is unusual. So I've just flicked you on there, Travis, if you want to have a chat. I am. Um, I was Googling <laughs> the cost of them in Australia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but no, I got nothing. I, uh, oh, um, no, I don't think I have anything. I think it's mostly just um, more around other ways we can lace them. So with these ones, we can still do all the other lacing, the ways you can lace them. So you just change Correct. It you can lace them the other ways, but uh, we're, we're trying to do it so that you don't have to. So you can lace them just like normal. You can adjust the tension at every spot throughout the shoe. Um, if you wanted them tighter in certain areas, looser in certain areas, um, uh, you know, because of the bumps, you can kind of control tension throughout. And, and yeah, you know, you can customize the fit of it without needing to lace it. Um, so the answer is yes, you can do that just because it's a normal string. Uh, but we're trying to invent it so that you don't have to, you know, patients can just lace like normal, feel their way through it, you know, have a part looser if they're, if they're, if they have their own hot spot, um, and still have their shoes comfortable. Okay, Michael's got his hand up again. So you have to unmute yourself again, Michael, because I accidentally clicked mute. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, uh, your laces have a, a elastic elasticity to them. Correct. What is the range of elasticity that they have? Because that given 
how much give they have will dictate how much the heel will rise in the footwear. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure the el exact elasticity component. Um, I believe it's around one and a half to two times stretch. Um, you know, there, there's a technical measurement for it that, that I don't have on yeah. hand right now. Um, we have the ability to control it. Now, back to your point, though, with the elasticity, you're still able to tighten and loosen, right? So if you wanted the back row tighter, you can tighten it all the way so that it's not elastic as well, right? So if you tighten them all the way, the bumps will get stuck. I should probably have a model shoe just to show everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, give me two minutes. Uh, but yeah, you can tighten them. Let me show you, let me show you. Give me two minutes. Yeah. Intermission, a quick intermission break. So I hope everybody, what's that? <laughs> okay, because what I find with a lot of clients is you'll find because they wear the footwear inappropriately, the heel rise causes the wear up of the heel cup. Yeah. And also it's something that's very, very visible on their socks. They get what I effectively call the sock window just above the heel and also underneath the toes where they wear out all their hosiery as a result of this. Because if the footwear's not holding on to them, they have to hold on to it. So I teach my clients, if it's not holding on to you, you have to hold on to it. So whether it be a shoe, a bra or a handbag, if you're running for your life, it's got to be able to hold on to you. Yeah, here we go. He's back. Um, yes, I'm back. <laughs> so here, you can see the shoe. Oh, let me... Yeah, you got change the blurred screen on settings. Yeah, let me change the video settings. If, that's it. If you pull it back towards yep. your head. There we go. And so here, you know, they're elastic where you can pull through. So you can pull each bump through individually. And so you can do that at every row throughout the shoe. If you liked it tighter in the midfoot section, but have it the rest of the rows tighter or looser, you could adjust one row within the shoe separately. Um, and they still hold in place, even after you tighten them, they would still hold in place, right? So when your foot's in the shoe, there's no way for your foot to do, to, to get your, the bumps out. Um, there's multiple points of failure control. So even if you were to, if one bump were to slip out, there's still tension maintained throughout the entire shoe. So it's impossible for your whole shoe to come loose, right? So the benefit of normal shoelaces having a quick release also serves as a disadvantage. If you want something secure, if normal laces were to come undone, the whole knot comes undone, the whole shoe comes undone, right? With our laces, one bump could slip. That's, I mean, that never happens, but if it were to slip, it's impossible for the whole shoe to come undone. Um, you know, we are primarily within the sporting world, but we're trying to uh, make some waves in the medical industry as well to help out with patients with neuropathy, arthritis, uh, diabetes would be a big disease here in the U.S. or globally speaking as well that we want to try to help tackle. Um, yeah, within the athletic world, we've been uh, the sponsor for obstacle course racing like Spartan Race, for marathons, for triathlons. So. Um, you know, they go through the most intense workouts um, and th they don't come undone and come out. Um, so we're, we're confident that this will work uh, and help out the patients in medical world as well. Has anyone got any other questions at all? Um, I have a question about the research on the uh, neuropathy and like the blood flow stuff. Okay. You, uh, whereabouts would I go looking for the stuff? Like, what am I looking for? I'm just curious on sort of like the studies themselves. Um, for right now, we have a few podiatrists in the U.S. that sponsor and back us. You know, they've, they've done um, not clinical research, but they've done, you know, test results from patients or just on a feeling good basis. Uh, we've always wanted to do a blood flow test per se, uh, just very difficult and expensive. Uh, we've done pressure charts on the top of the foot. So that one uh, would help out a little bit as well. Um, where we, if you see normal shoelaces, they're tied a little tighter at the top and our laces, you have just control or even pressure on the top of your foot. Um, so I, I can refer you to a few podiatrists that sponsor us, back us, use it with their patients. Um, and then we can also show you some uh, university studies that we've done in terms of foot contact with the shoe uh, and, and in terms of uh, pressure on the top of the foot too. Yeah, that'd be cool. I get just mm -hmm. curious on the ins and outs. Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. If, you, if you had those links, if you can pass them on to me, then when I actually post this video, wherever I end up putting it, I can put all the links there as well or send it out to um, everyone that's actually Yeah, sure. On it's, here. A, it's, it's a Japanese study from the uh, university. So I, you know, there are a lot of pictures, but uh, the results 
are, are going to be in Japanese. So that's that's why I haven't been able to share it. Um, but but yeah, I, I'll show you guys the the PDF, or I can send it to you, Tyson, and we can send it out uh, after the fact. Yeah, that'd be good. So I am going to allow. So uh, Ellen asked a question as well. So I'm going to click allow Ellen to talk as well. So if you want to unmute yourself, Ellen, and then you can ask that question, unless you don't want to ask the question. It's in the background at the moment, so that's <laughs> all right. It's probably not the greatest idea. Live it's on the edge. <laughs> I was just um, envisaging that you probably run a fairly easy test, even with an old pair of shoes, just grabbing laces versus Caterpie and attaching a TBPI to the tip of a toe or two. And that would actually make for a pretty simple study, really. Just need a pair of scissors. TBPI, I'm actually unfamiliar with that. Oh, so basically... TBI, it, they, it's to like, there'll be TBI. It's a different terminology. Yeah, so um, connecting a Doppler to measure the blood pressure to the apex, the tip of a toe. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just see why we don't try that. Mm -hmm. Do you do you, you have one of those, Ellen? Yeah, I do. Yep. So that would be an interesting test, and then you could give us some feedback. Yeah, I mean, if you guys could help with that, that would be you know helpful with us as well. All I need is you're going to uh, send me the, the laces. Testing. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I got in I, before you. I actually have a cup. I have a couple of spare pairs. So if anyone wants to do the toe pressure thing and they're in Australia, let me know and mm -hmm. I can uh, just send them straight to you. And then yeah, that'd be you sort of sort of let us know what sort of um, results you get with, with just with some of the things you do, and also different lacing techniques. Um, uh, you know, the ankle block versus um, the rabbit ears. That would actually be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, you know, we'd be curious to see about that too. So, uh, Michael, you'll have if you've got a question. If you want to uh, unmute yourself, there we go. Yeah. As I said, this has been my icky picky for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. when, uh, you picked your shoes up. the The pattern frequency you put the, had the laces in it was figure of eight. Okay. Um, they're uh, I'm not sure. They're just laces. Yeah. The, the yeah, normal traditional way. Yeah. Is that what it's called, figure eight? So, right there. From, from, from lace hole to upwards, the, the, the lace does a classic figure of eight action all the way up. Okay, so this is the figure eight all the way, okay. Yeah. If it's changed to double helix, which is what I teach my clients, you get a, at least a 20% greater efficiency in the lace pressure across the top apron of the shoe. Um, I'm not sure that applies with elastic laces as well. Uh, I would imagine yes, because it, it makes it easier for you to spread the control system out. Because the way it's done at present, you have to pull every station to just the, the lower station. If it's yep. crosses across, up, it makes it easier for you to adjust the shoe. I mean, that, that's kind of the point of the bump so that you can lace them in any way. You could lace them in a spiral pattern, actually. You could lace them completely different yeah. from normal laces because the ends don't have to meet. Um, so you could lace them in any way possible and they would still maintain tension throughout. Look, after dealing with the human condition for so long, anything that makes it easier for them is what they're looking for. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> I totally agree. That's why we invented these, you know, so you could lace like normal, not have to teach knots, maintain tension and pressure and customize uh, the fit for the shoe. Uh, that, that's exactly why, you know, because uh, it, it's, it's hard to trust humans with, with, you know, different customizations like these. Um, sometimes knowledge doesn't get it doesn't get passed through. I'd be, I'd be interested in running trials on that, to be honest. Start again? I'd be interested in running tests on that one to see because sure. uh, particularly with clients who, as you say, you want to get to a broader market and clients with mobility problems and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, to adjust the issue, they'd have to attack every station. If you change the system, they, it minimizes the number of places they have to do the work. Uh, and, and they would have, still have to tie their shoes every time. And so we're trying uh, to avoid having them tie their shoes because that's also my work. Not, 
avoid them tying the shoe, but it's a, this is about the adjusting phase. They still have to okay. adjust it together, don't they? Uh, yes. So the first time you put them on, you have to adjust the tension to your liking. Um, once you adjust them, then you never have to touch them again. You know, it takes one or two tries after you wear them. Um, yeah, well, that, that's, what, that's, exactly, that's exactly what I found. I wore them the first time. I went, ah, probably a little bit tight in the forefoot. I just adjusted it slightly. The second time I went, ah, a little bit tight in the midfoot. Then I, then I got it right in the third one. So, yep. um, yeah, so it's been good since then. Yep. Uh, so we, we like to front load all the work during the installation process. Once you find your the right fit, that you don't have to deal with um, reinstalling or readjusting every time you put on your shoe. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is uh, anybody yeah, we'd be happy here? to send you guys a pair. Yeah, so what we need, everyone who's on here, um, like a lot of the people on here, I know who they are and I know where they are. There's a couple of podiatry legends on here. Um, so... Uh, mythical but, object. <laughs> <laughs> but, but everybody else, um, yeah, if you can just send me your address details and then I can pass them on to Anthony and he can... Um, because like I said, I've got a couple of pairs here that I can send to some of the people in Australia that I know uh, who want to test them out, but the others I can pass um, the addresses on. Anthony can sort something out for you because you're here live. That's the benefit of turning up live. Anyone watching Absolutely. recording doesn't get that. So has anyone got any other questions? If not, we can call it an early night. Uh, Anthony can go and have another coffee to wake up because it's now 5 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, a whopping five in the morning. Now, now it's too late to go back to sleep. You can't go back to sleep. I know. I get up for a call once a month at 3.30 in the morning because it's on in America. And <laughs> yeah. we finish at 4.30 and I'm like, ah, you know what? I was going to get up in half an hour anyway, so I might as well just stay up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I got a question. Yes. How do we adjust the length? So say like, you know, some shoes you don't have, as you have too much lace. Yeah. Um, how do we adjust the length on these? And then also how long do they last? Like on average, obviously it's different depending on what you do with them. Well, I tried sure. mine sure. back through, just through back through here. So the part that was left over, I just threaded them back through the front part mm -hmm. and they haven't moved since then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that, that's the recommended way that we, we tell people. Um, you can also reverse lace them and cut them off. So for more fashion-y, uh, athletic going out shoes, or sorry, uh, lifestyle shoes, you can reverse tie them into the shoe and then you can cut off the excess if you uh, don't want to use them. Uh, we do sell different sizes. So we do sell a small size for kids uh, or, or just for smaller shoes as well. And we recommend the small size is for shoes with four or less eyelet rows and the standard size is for five or more. You said they come in 15 different colors, is that right? Um, at least. I think we're at 20 or 25 different colors right now. Some are permanent editions, some are limited or seasonal colors as well. Yeah, so the ones that I got, I got black, black, and black. So the ones that <laughs> yeah. I send out to people, you're getting black. Don't don't complain. Black are by <laughs> far the most popular laces. Oh, and your second question was how long they last. So we've done, we've had a, a pair of laces go through at least three or four pairs of running shoes with 400 miles each. Um, and that's kind of the standard limit that that's recommended for running shoes and still they still go strong um i would say the things i could wear it down faster would be if you were to wash them in hot water or if you were to dry them in high heat they would wear down the elasticity a little quicker um, but otherwise under normal use conditions you should go through at least three or four pairs of shoes um, most patients just buy new laces to match their new shoes though but in terms of color um yeah so and michael do asks do they have a weight limit do have a weight limit? I for our shoelace, I don't think so. We do make our elastic. We do make other elastic products like safety cords or bungee cords that would have weight limits. Um, but it's not for the thread. It's more of the fastening of the metal clamp to the thread for, for the bungee cords. Uh, so for shoelaces, I can't imagine there's a weight limit. Um, we, we've never had an issue or problem with that. So so yeah. Um, and wholesale, uh, do we just contact the guys here in Australia or like do we have to uh, Yeah, so we have different distributors in different countries. For, uh, for Australia, we do have an Australian distributor that I can uh, hook you guys up with. Awesome, that'd be great. Yeah, so I'll mm -hmm. get all those details off you um, uh, later on as well, just so I can okay. post it with it, post it with the, uh, with the recording. 
Perfect, perfect. Um, what, one last interesting thing, I think, just as an overall theme is with elasticity and, and fitting, it has become a much more popular thing um, within the athletic world, right? All these yoga pants, all these athletic apparel has moved into the uh, elastic side of things just to be more form fitting um, and to be kind of tighter on the body as well. And so, you know, with shoes and shoelaces, Many times shoe manufacturers don't want to have no laces because there's, there's no control of tension, even if it's elastic. Uh, so for, for now, shoelaces are still the main method of binding and elastic does seem to be the trend of where things are going uh, in terms of form fitting for the foot um, as opposed to static laces or static shoes. Yeah, well, form fitting on the foot's about as far as I'm going to go. You don't want me in a form fitting shirt or form fitting pants. <laughs> yeah, that's so true too, I suppose. Form, yeah. form fitting with a limitation. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just limit it to laces for me. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. UK distributor. Um, all right. Yeah, we, we'd love to give you a call. Yeah, so well, if anyone's got any other questions afterwards, uh, what's your email address, Anthony, if they want to just uh, yes. uh, email you directly and ask you any further sure. questions? So my email is my last name, Pong, P-O-N-G, at caterpie.com. That's nice uh, and easy. I'll type it really quick in the chat. And for me, and if anyone wants to ask me anything about this or anything else later on, just tf at tysonfranklin.com. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Anthony, I want to thank you for coming on here, talking about the shoelaces, talking about Caterpie. It's... Um, it's been interesting. And I've loved some of the questions that people have asked as well. They're things that I wouldn't have asked about. And Michael, your uh, information about what you've been doing with laces uh, where you are is good as well. So yep. I will bid everybody a farewell. And yeah, any questions, send the emails to Anthony or send the email to myself. And we'll talk to you later on. All right. Appreciate it, everyone. Thank you so much. Happy to send out samples and uh, looking to make a little bit more of an introduction in the medical side. Okay. Um, all right. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks for that. Take See care, you later. Everyone. Bye. See you later. Bye.